Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, a state of emergency is declared in Colorado after thousands of people are asked to evacuate because of fast spreading wildfires. Outside with live cam, the fog and mist are back this morning as we wait for that strong cold front and we wrap up the year. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, December 31st. Happy last day of 2021. I woke up this morning and I don't think it was until about 45 minutes ago. I was like, oh my gosh, it's New Year's Eve. It is. And Mike is here with more on how things are shaping up as we go into this afternoon and more importantly this evening. Well, it's going to be warm and humid all day long and very sultry tonight. After midnight, there may actually be a little bit of fog if you're out really, really late, a little bit of fog trying to form up. But this morning, if you are heading out, I mean, it's a wall of fog. I pulled out of my driveway this morning and uh, yeah, it was already around there. And I think this is airport cam looking toward the airport, just given the fact that a little bit of lights right there. Now, granted, this is on top of a building, but uh, visibility is almost down to pea soup. Casterville zero right now, quarter mile, the airport, Bernie stage, Stinson, Hondo, and a little bit better at Port SA and then uh, New Braunfels and Randolph, but just about everybody uh, has some fog around the area except Eagle Pass and Del Rio, and we do have a dense fog advisory for most all of the area up until 10 o'clock this morning. It is going to be very, very stubborn. Yesterday, of course, some of the dense fog advisory was actually extended toward 11 o'clock, so this is going to be really stubborn fog. It's going to be around all morning long, getting thicker at times. There is some mist out there. Just the roads are kind of damp. So if you do have to head out this morning, do take it easy. Temperatures are actually above what the normal high is right now. We're almost 25 degrees above normal as of right now. And there is a ton of humidity as expected. And like I said, that's going to be sticking around. Mountain Cedar is very, very high. It will be interesting, like I said, to see what happens once the wind starts to kick up tomorrow as well as on Sunday that may just really shoot up. We may be looking at the highest mountain cedar readings of the uh, of the season so far. Fog's going to stick around through mid morning, mostly cloudy at noon and then partly cloudy skies later on today. 81 for a high temperature. The record's 83. Yesterday we had 82, one away from the record. It's going to be close to it, close to a record again tomorrow. Now we'll start to see changes tomorrow. Dry air moves in here during the afternoon, very windy conditions. Then late tomorrow night is when that front comes through and literally the bottom is going to drop out. We'll see temperatures from the high to the low high tomorrow, low Sunday, about 50 degree difference. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Mark. Thank you, Mike. San Antonio police say an 18 year old suspect has been arrested and charged with one count of murder and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon after a shooting on the city's northwest side. Police say the suspect is identified as 18 year old Jordan Eaton, and he was not apprehended at the scene after officers identified him on surveillance video. SAPD says Eaton eventually went to a local police substation and turned himself in. The shooting happened just before noon yesterday at an apartment complex in the 7100 block of Wars Block. Officers found a man at the apartment complex who'd apparently been shot. SAPD says a man was taken to University Hospital where he later died. Police have not released a motive. The identity of the victim remains unknown. This morning, a state of emergency has been declared in Colorado after thousands of people are asked to evacuate because of fast moving wildfires. The National Weather Service of Denver Boulder described the situation as life threatening. ABC's Andrew Dembert has the latest. Overnight, a state of emergency declared in Colorado, where multiple wind fueled fires have burned hundreds of homes in Boulder County. Oh my God. Dry conditions and wind gusts topping oh 100 miles per hour, providing the perfect conditions for the fires to spark and quickly spread. Well, this is in the worst possible spot during the worst possible wintertime drought. Residents forced to flee as the fire moved in, many given just minutes notice, some even running from the flames. I have a party near the Element Hotel that's going to be trying to evacuate on foot towards you. They are actively running from fire behind them. All 13,000 residents in the town of Superior told to leave immediately. Shoppers evacuating this Costco, stepping into an apocalyptic scene of smoke and wind. Holy Holy Robert Gutierrez posting this video of him driving through the massive flames. More than 600 homes have been lost in Boulder County, along with a hotel and a Target store. The fire is now the most destructive in Colorado history. This morning, an insurance agent in the area says she's already getting calls from people who have lost their homes. And I took my first call from somebody who lost their home just a little bit ago. It's just something you don't plan on. 
It's just, it's just devastating to see this. And this time of year, you just never imagine having this happen in December. At least six people have been transported to the hospital. Officials expect that number to grow. Due to the magnitude of this fire, the intensity of this fire, and its presence in such a heavily populated area, we would not be surprised if there are injuries or fatalities. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. President Joe Biden has warned Russia's Vladimir Putin that the U.S. could impose new sanctions against Russia if it takes further military action against Ukraine. Putin says that such a move by the U.S. could lead to a complete rupture of ties between the nations. The two leaders spoke frankly for nearly an hour yesterday amid growing alarm over Russia's troop buildup. White House says that Biden made clear that the U.S. and its allies, quote, will respond decisively if Russia further invades Ukraine, end quote. When it comes to COVID-19 vaccinations, more than half of Americans have rolled up their sleeves at least twice. That's according to new data from the CDC. More than 205 million people, or 62% of Americans, are fully vaccinated. Over a million doses of COVID-19 are being given out right now, daily, and only 33.4% of the population is boosted. That's about 69 million people. The FDA is expected to broaden the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine booster to children ages 12 to 15 in just a few days. Well, as you know by now, New York City has revived its annual New Year's Eve ball drop celebration in Times Square. The city said it is limiting the number of people to witness the six ton crystal encrusted ball descend about a, above the crowd, about 15,000 spectators. The expected crowd far fewer than 50,000 revelers initially envisioned by organizers. Doubts swirled whether the city would have to cancel this year's bash as the city posted record numbers of COVID cases in the days leading up to it. Some cities like Atlanta have already decided to cancel their own New Year's celebrations. Right now on your Friday morning and New Year's Eve, it's 437, about 66 degrees. Well, still ahead, sheet pan meals are apparently all the rage online. We'll tell you which pans work the best and provide for an easy cleanup. Plus, the Spurs kick off a seven-game road trip tonight up in Memphis. We'll have a preview, plus big news regarding Spurs assistant coach Becky Hammond. Take a look outside with the roads at 437 this morning. Like uh, we've been talking about this morning, you can still see that fog. Several areas of our TransGuide cameras will be talking to Mike and continue to look out those roads throughout the show. Well, and here's a test. We can see the roads on TransGuide. What about live cam? Yeah, it is a little bit yeah. trickier, but these yeah. cameras are a little bit further up into the lower atmosphere. You're watching GMSA. We'll be right back. And by the way, if you've got to head out the door in the next few minutes, Happy New Year from everybody at KSAT. Spurs assistant coach Becky Hammond finalizing a five-year deal with the WNBA's Las Vegas Aces to become their next head coach. That is according to ESPN, originally sourced by The Athletic, but she plans to finish the season with the Spurs. The deal would make Hammond the league's highest paid coach. Becky's been assistant coach under Greg Popovich since 2014. She was a six-time All-Star during her career with the WNBA. She's been interviewed for several head coach openings in the past, but has uh, hasn't gotten an offer to be the first woman to lead an NBA team. After the game against Miami was postponed, the Spurs will tip off a seven game road trip tonight up in Memphis. Per the Spurs injury report, point guard DeJounte Murray remains out due to health and safety protocols. Meanwhile, Lonnie Walker is questionable with a right knee contusion. And poor Coyote, did you see this tweet from him? He wrote, I really should start reading my emails. I love it. <laughs> he was looking at all the empty seats because the Spurs postponed that game with Miami. Yes, you should, Coyote. All right, so here's the matchup for tonight. The 14 and 19 Spurs at the 22 and 14 Memphis Grizzlies, or as David Sears calls them, Memphis. After that, the Spurs will face six straight teams from the Eastern Conference. UTSA head football coach Jeff Trailer named one of the five finalists for the George Munger College at uh, Collegiate rather Coach of the Year. It's presented yearly by the Maxwell Football Club. Trailer led the Roadrunners to the Conference USA Championship, their second straight bowl game, and a 12 and 2 record. South Carolina head football coach Shane Beamer got two buckets dumped on him yesterday after winning the Duke Mayo Bowl. First, the Gatorade shower after beating North Carolina 38-21. Then it was time for that mayonnaise bath. What's wrong? 
Oh my God, that's- You're not digging that? That is so gross. Uh, two staff members Ugh. of Dukes uh, <laughs> hit uh, Coach Beamer on the head with the bucket before dumping mayo all over him. That's four and a half gallons of Dukes mayo slightly watered down, although it doesn't oh look God, like by much. <laughs> Coach oh is now getting showered with Cheez-Its, French fries, and mayo after winning their bowl games. Shower me in Cheez-Its and French fries. Mayo, okay. That's a no. Have you ever gotten mayo in your hair? Uh, no, no, no. When we were younger, we used to do like a mayo thing okay. for like healthy hair. I'm listening. Oh God, I couldn't eat mayo for years afterwards because you just smell it. But Mike says what? he's heard it. it's good it's, for it's your good hair. It's good for your hair. But uh -huh. I remember my mom put it on my hair when I was like 14 and afterwards like mayo for 10 years was like, ugh. Ah, uh, this is going to be trending in some bad way here in the next <laughs> couple of days for sure. That's a look at morning sports right now. 443, 66 degrees. Up next, a first look at newly released body cam video of a cleaning crew worker's dangerous encounter with the tiger in Florida. In this morning's GMA First Look, newly released body cam video of a cleaning crew worker's dangerously close encounter with a tiger in a Naples, Florida zoo. Oh my God, is that real? Officers finding a 26-year-old man bitten by a rare Malayan tiger after authorities say he entered an unauthorized area. Calling 911 himself after police say he crossed two barriers to reach inside the tiger's enclosure. I'm being attacked by a tiger, please, please, please. It was a tiger defense. This was a tiger defense. It's a male tiger defending his territory. It was a tiger defense, not a tiger attack. There's only um, less than 200 in the wild left. They're actually critically endangered. We want to make sure that the news gets out and people learn about these animals. And coming up at 7 a.m., the latest on this event and what charges the worker could face. With your GMA First Look, I'm Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Well, on a lighter note, a sheet pan lets you make dinner quickly and cleanup is super quick. Now, 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz finds out which sheet pans cook the best. Sheet pan meals are all the rage online. Gorgeous, complete meals roasted to perfection using only one pan. Sheet pans, actually called half sheet pans because home versions are smaller than those used in commercial kitchens, measure about 13 by 18 inches with low sides. They may look similar, but there are differences. Consumer Reports tested 19 pans, both coated and uncoated. They roasted chicken and vegetables, and later a sticky mix of pumpkin and cream cheese was baked on to test cleaning. They then tested durability by scouring the surfaces with steel wool to replicate wear over time. In general, uncoated pans cook a little more evenly, they're more durable, but they're harder to clean. You can pay as much as $150 for an uncoated pan that testers found isn't even easy to clean. But this $18 pan from Nordicware is a top performer. It heats evenly and aced the durability test. We found that coated pans heat up and cook faster and they're much easier to clean. The Williams Sonoma Gold Touch Pro Nonstick Non Corrugated Half Sheet for $33 heats up quickly and is the easiest to clean. Consumer Reports' best buy coated pan is from Walmart. The Mainstay's Gold Nonstick Aluminized Half Sheet Pan got high marks overall, and it's only $8. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Mike, you look upset over this. <laughs> Amp, use parchment paper. Oh, that stuff's great. Uh, I've, just seen, that down. I've seen yeah. that, I've seen I just, foil. I just get the every, foils yeah. that, that or, I can or recycle foil. at. But the yeah. nice thing with uh, parchment paper, it doesn't stick to that either, like cookies yeah. mm -hmm. on parchment paper, and because sometimes it'll, they'll stick to foil a little bit. Parchment I, paper's I've great. been experimenting with an air fryer this week, and of course that's supposed to be the bee's knees when yeah. it comes to like French fries, it's but this good. week I've been experimenting with other stuff, and I, I like it so far, because yeah. that the, the, it'll fit right on the top it's rack of the dishwasher. honestly kind of the way to go. I've heard about those things that they're yeah. great. And I love mine. Almost anything in them. Yeah, not bad at all. It's a good gift. All right, this is what we're facing uh, this morning, and it's going to be sticking around throughout most all of the morning. Now, granted, this camera's on top of a building, so it's a little bit higher, but uh, there's plenty of fog down at the surface and a lot of mist and drizzle. Let's jump ahead to tonight. It is going to be warm. It's going to be humid temperatures. are going to be in the 70s. May actually have some patchy fog late, late in the overnight hours again, and then going into tomorrow morning. So if you're really going to be staying out late tonight, just watch it driving uh, with the mist and with some of the fog. Now, we do have a dense fog advisory this morning. 
morning up until 10 o'clock and visibility. This is some of the thickest fog. I guess it's going back to earlier in the week. Yesterday we had somewhat of a break, but I mean it is coming in here early and thick. Zero visibility. Castroville, quarter mile out there at the airport. Just about everybody is seeing some fog this morning and uh, we've got also once we get rid of some of the fog, we're still going to keep some clouds around. So we've got this moisture coming in upstairs in the atmosphere. Obviously, down at the surface is where all the uh, low level moisture is coming from, helping out with some of this fog. Here's what the uh, dew points are going to be doing throughout the day. Not going anywhere, which means it's going to stay very humid. And that'll be the situation into early tomorrow morning. But by morning hours, notice how the hill country start to dry out. And then about noon is when that initial dry line comes on through here. So we're going to see the dew point temperatures drop down throughout the day. It's going to be a very comfortable day. It's going to be warm though. We're still going to be up in the 80s and it's going to be windy, but that humidity is going to be going away. Then we get the next surge of really dry air and that's coming in here with the very cold air that comes in overnight. Speaking of cold, these are actual temperatures right now. 12 below in Bismarck. The wind chill is 31 degrees below zero up there. Definitely the coldest air of the season. And, and that cold air after we hit 80 tomorrow is going to be coming in and it looks like the timing of the actual cold front will be late tomorrow night and in the overnight hours. So temperatures are going to be dropping down between again the high tomorrow and the low Sunday morning, roughly 50 degrees. This computer model has us at 31. It is going to be fairly breezy, so I'm going just above freezing here in town. But of course, wind chills are definitely going to be a factor all day long on Sunday because temperatures really aren't going to be uh, getting. It's going to be hard to get out of the 40s uh, even Sunday afternoon with some sunshine low, maybe some low 50s as well. Now today 77 mostly cloudy skies at noon and then call it partly cloudy later on this afternoon. Very warm, very humid 81 for high temperature. It stays very mild overnight tonight. And we are going to start off at 65 tomorrow, 83. The drier air comes on in here throughout the afternoon. It's going to be very windy tomorrow afternoon. Then the front comes through late tomorrow night. Temperatures will drop down. I'm going for 34 here in town just because the wind is going to keep things up a little bit, but only 53 in the afternoon. Still very windy on Sunday down to 28 Monday morning. Now temperatures will rebound somewhat but we'll still be on the cool side, especially those low temperatures stay in the 40s throughout a good chunk of next week, but a really, really cold start. Are you taking down the tree on Thursday? That's the epiphany. Okay. January oh, 6th, got it. The, okay. the 12th Last, day of Christmas. The week, All right. Yeah. Three, three Kings Day. Yes, okay. and that's when you can... That's the official... If you're lazy, you can keep your tree up until, end. Yeah, until oh, Thursday. Oh, when, do you, when do you take your tree down? I've started to wait till that. I used to take down in the 1st, but now I wait till... I usually wait till the yeah, 6th as well. Till the 6th. Yeah. yeah that's, I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with all that. Uh, we, let's just wait. Let's, <laughs> let's give just us wait. something to do later on, right? Exactly. 452, about 67 degrees. Up next, a preview of tonight's Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve celebration. Plus, you can soon return to Hogwarts. Whoa, I'm excited about this after 20 years. Traffic this early is usually very light, but we are worried about fog and mist in the area as you look live at 37 and Houston. We're going to check in with Stephen Cavazos coming up in our next half hour. The countdown is on for 2022, and you'll be able to watch all of the events on Dick Clark's New Year's Rock and Eve with Ryan Seacrest right here on KSAT 12. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Ryan Seacrest and Liza Koshy will be joining you this evening live in your living room for Dick Clark's New Year's Rock and E with Ryan Seacrest. Many live events have been canceled because of the recent COVID surge, but Seacrest tells us this show was happening no matter what. Well, it, there are a lot of different people and determining factors to get to that place. However, in our minds, the show is always going to happen. Uh, you know, there's always going to be a ball that drops, whether there are people there or not. We'll see performances from Journey live in Times Square, Billy Porter in New Orleans, and more tonight on ABC. Streaming today, it's the critically acclaimed directorial debut from Maggie Gyllenhaal. The Lost Daughter stars Olivia Colman and Dakota Johnson as women and mothers who are struggling with the roles they're supposed to play, which is what made it a role Johnson wanted to play. I think I found it heartbreaking and so real and so common and I don't know, it, there was a freedom in playing these people that, like, 
you don't see very often. The Lost Daughter, out today on Netflix. Also out today on Netflix, new seasons of Queer Eye and Cobra Kai. And tomorrow on HBO Max, it's the Harry Potter 20th anniversary Return to Hogwarts special, featuring Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grint, Emma Watson, and more, reminiscing about the two decades since the release of the first film. And happy birthday to Val Kilmer. The Batman and Doors star is 62 today, while the guy behind Gangnam Style, South Korean rapper Psy, is 44. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. I read yesterday Daniel Radcliffe revealed that he had a crush on Helena Bottom Carter. Of course he did. Yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't I, know. I'm, I'm just, I wish I could go to Hogwarts. I'm still waiting for my letter, so. There you go. Right now, 457, about 67 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, the Federal Aviation Administration says holiday travelers can expect delays at the airport over the upcoming th days thanks to rising COVID-19 infections. Plus, this is the end of the road for BlackBerry, a name that was almost synonymous with cell phones. Details coming up in your morning Tech Bites. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's M1 in Washington. The COVID-19 <clears throat> surge is relentless as we head into the new year, rising concerns for more hospitalizations and delayed travel. All this and more coming up. And outside with live cam right now, things are very foggy out there and misty yet again as we wait for that very strong cold front to arrive for the first weekend of 2022. Good morning, everybody. Guess what day it is? It's Friday, December 31st. The last day of 2021. Yep. And OK, it's 501. So is it officially 2022 in New Zealand? It is. It is 1201 AM in Auckland, New Zealand. Happy New Year down there Woo! in the Southern Hemisphere, <laughs> at least part of it. I wonder how's it going so far. Are we OK? I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. It'll be in the news no matter what. That's for sure. Yeah. But let's check in with Mike Ostrage. See what's happening back, right back here at home right now. A lot of fog this morning. Yesterday we had somewhat of a break from a lot of the, the widespread thick fog. But this morning, I mean, it is definitely soupy out there. We're at 66 degrees, so we're actually above what our normal high temperature is this time of year. And notice how we've got 96% humidity. That dew point down there at the bottom 65. So when those two numbers 66, 65 are neck and neck like that, you get that very high humidity. Not much of a breeze out there and that along with some other factors is why we have this fog. We're going to make it up to 81 later on today. The record is 83. Yesterday we had 82, one degree away from its uh, respective record. The aquifer yesterday did drop down two tenths of a foot and the allergens, we've got mountain cedar really, really high. It's going to be interesting, of course, to see what happens when that front moves on through here. We're going to have windy conditions tomorrow as well as on Sunday. Here's some of the visibilities out there right now. Just a quarter mile at the airport, just over a mile at Randolph as well as Port S.A. And Castroville has actually improved ever so slightly. It was down to zero just uh, about an hour or so ago, half hour ago, and most everybody does have fog around the area as of right now. Dense fog advisory is in effect for a good chunk of the area up until 10 o'clock this morning, and it's going to be very, very stubborn fog. So partly cloudy, warm and humid then the rest of today after we get rid of some of this fog. Temperatures um, really going to be still about 15 degrees above normal. That's going to be the case all the way into tonight. Very warm and humid and then late, late tonight in the overnight hours may actually start to see a little bit of fog developing. So if you are out well past midnight, do be careful with some of that uh, fog trying to move on in here. Humid start tomorrow, then we're going to be drying out. It is going to be hot, so we'll get drier moving in here about noon tomorrow, and it's going to be very windy. The humidity is going to be dropping off, but temperatures will still be up into the low 80s. And then tomorrow night, the cold front moves on in here, and temperatures are going to be dropping like a rock. We're going to be uh, seeing 40, 50 degree drop in temperatures from late tomorrow into early Sunday. And then we get our first freeze. Going to be close to a freeze here in town tomorrow, but definitely on Monday. Will it stay cold for the first week of the new year? Details coming up. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, happy last day of the year. Yeah, I can't believe we're already here. And you know what? We have a real treat for you right now. The roads are going to be empty if you have to head out earlier. But as Mark was mentioning a little bit before we tossed a break, uh, that the big concern is going to be.
is going to be this fog for the areas. You can see right now we have some empty corridors, so that's some good news. US 90 at 35, not a whole lot of activity out there, but very foggy as you can see from this shot at 281 at Grayson. Can't really even make out the lanes there. Same situation goes for 1604. So again, take it easy if you have to, for whatever reason, get your morning started early. So let's take a look at that map and see how that road weather map is looking. Uh, lots of yellow on the screen, which if you can see up there uh, does indicate that we do have a lot of foggy conditions. So again, make sure you use those low beams and take it slow out on the roads. And if your travels take you through San Antonio, we have those inbound times for you from Bernie on I-10. In those eastbound lanes, we're looking at 25 minutes at this hour. 281 southbound from Bulverde, 28 minutes, and we're looking at 26 minutes on 35 southbound coming in from New Braunfels. So no delays just yet. The roads, again, very quiet. So we'll continue to keep a close eye on them, but we'll have more construction spots to be out on the lookout for, including some safety tips if you plan to celebrate New Year's Eve a little bit later tonight. Mark. Thank you, sir. New this morning, San Antonio police investigating a crash on our city's west side. Jonathan Coltel joins us live this morning. Jonathan, what's the latest? What well, we've learned only one vehicle was involved in this crash and the driver was killed. Let's take a look at what that scene looked like earlier. This crash happening on the Axis Road of 410 near Waters Edge Drive in front of the Acadiana Cafe. That's between 151 and Marbach Road at 130 this morning. Police say the SUV hit a utility pole, killing the driver believed to be in his 40s and slightly injuring the passenger. Now, police also say they had just left a party and they believe alcohol was a factor in this crash. And as we head into the holiday weekend, San Antonio Police Department's traffic unit will be active on roadways and highways and say they will be doing their very best to respond to calls where drunk drivers may be reported. Now, both SAPD and Bear County Sheriff's Office say it's an all-hands responsibility that everyone plan ahead of New Year's celebrations to ensure and prevent from drinking and driving. As for the identity of the victim killed in this crash, we're still waiting for more information on that. Reporting, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Well, the FBI is trying to get more people involved in the search for three-year-old Lena Kill. They've released a new missing persons poster on Twitter. The FBI says it will continue to help San Antonio police in this search, which is now in its second week. Lena was last seen December 20th at a playground at her apartment complex off of Fredericksburg Road. The search and rescue SATX group and a new group of volunteers teamed up to search a five-mile radius from Lena's apartment yesterday. Right now it's just about 507 new COVID cases continue to rise this New Year's Eve for a third day in a row. And health officials continue to caution against large gatherings this holiday. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest from Washington. This morning, urgent concerns on New Year's Eve as the U.S. breaks records once again, averaging 316,000 new COVID-19 cases a day, up nearly fourfold from a month ago. Daily COVID-related deaths averaging 1,100. Hospitalizations climbing as well, with 90,000 Americans admitted with COVID each day, double from last month. Top health officials advising against large holiday gatherings. That would be a risky situation that I would recommend against. Pediatric cases are soaring with 380 children landing in the hospital a day, a 66% increase from about a week ago. You have an undervaccinated or un relatively unvaccinated population of children with a highly contagious virus. And this virus is seeking out the susceptible and that is children. Now, ABC confirming the FDA is expected to expand Pfizer boosters for ages 12 to 15, an authorization that may come as early as Monday. This as travel frustrations rise. The Federal Aviation Administration now warning severe weather and the pandemic are likely to trigger more delays as more employees test positive for COVID. The CEO of JetBlue saying staff sick calls are running up to 300% above normal. We um, are seeing a lot of people who are out sick, but also people who whose anxiety is rising again. New York State is seeing another record-breaking day of 74,000 new COVID-19 cases, a testament to the pandemic not slowing down as we approach the new year. M1, ABC News, Washington. Important note happening today. Officials at University Health, along with city leaders, including Ron Nirenberg, Mayor Ron Nirenberg, and County Judge Nelson Wolf will be discussing the spread of COVID-19 in the community. And among healthcare workers, that press conference scheduled for 10 o'clock this morning. We plan to, plan to bring that to you live right here on KSAT 12 and on KSAT.com.
It's 509 and 66 degrees. Still had a company once a major player in the cell phone industry announcing it ending support for its devices. Let's check in to see how that fog is sticking around. You can definitely see it at the these cameras are higher, but definitely you're going to have some fog on the roads this morning. Stephen will give you a look at those roads and Mike will let us know what we can expect for the new year. Five twelve on your New Year's Eve. Thanks for joining us here on GMSA. While many of us enjoy the sights and sounds brought on by fireworks, our furry friends are definitely not fans. Yeah, mine, mine too are mm -hmm. not. The city of San Antonio is asking you to consider your pets during New Year's celebrations. Most pets are not comfortable with loud sounds and noises. Animal Care Service suggests keeping them inside and giving them a treat. If your animal is kennel friendly, have that handy as well. We really ask people to ensure that if they do have outdoor pets, bring them inside, at least for the night, bring them inside. Another place they might feel safe could be a laundry room, a den, or even a bathroom with doors closed. I've heard other people say, treat it like a bad thunderstorm. Uh, you can even put the, those thunder shirts on them to help calm them yeah. down. Some people tried those with various success. Yeah, I have a, a light weighted blanket that mm -hmm. I'll put around mine and I mm -hmm. can sit next to them. Yep. It's really, if you're present, that's what helps calm them down. Understood. Right now, 513, about 66 degrees. Still had white Tesla is recalling nearly half a million of its cars. <laughs> huh. Is that true? Geico's been saving folks money for 85 years? Yep, that's right. Wait, so if Geico's 85, that makes you... Are you asking if I'm 85 years old? <laughs> I mean, sea turtles live to be 150, so... <laughs> no, I, I, was, I was not. Do I look 85? What? No! You don't... You look young. You, 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 you look young for however old you are. Geico. Saving people money for 85 years. What happens when you block heartburn with one Prilosec OTC in the morning? Heartburn doesn't stand a chance. Day... Or night. Excess stomach acid can cause heartburn. Prilosec OTC works differently by preventing excess acid production. So don't fight heartburn. Block it. Prilosec OTC. One pill in the morning blocks heartburn all day and all night. In today's Tech Bytes, a major safety recall by Tesla. 475,000 vehicles are affected. The more serious issue concerns Model S sedans. A defective latch may cause the front trunk to open while the car is moving. The other effects, rear view cameras on some Model 3s. A technical glitch at Japan's Kyoto University accidentally erased 77 terabytes of data during a routine backup operation for its supercomputer. Millions of wiped files reportedly came from several research organizations. No word yet on what caused the malfunction. And finally, many classic BlackBerry devices will basically go dead next Tuesday. The affected BlackBerry models are those using the 7.1 operating system or earlier. Data services will be lost along with the ability to call, text, and use some apps. Goodbye BlackBerry and goodbye early 2000s. Those are your Tech Bites. So basically they're becoming coasters for drinks? I mean, works for me, right? <laughs> 518 right now. We're going to check in with Stephen Cavazos of the Roads. Hey, Stephen, I know it's been foggy out there. Any incidents? Yeah, unfortunately, we do have an incident here. Mark's here, 35 southbound at Zazamoto. So a shot from Transguide, and you can see off in the distance, although it's still foggy, we can make out those flashing lights. Let's take a closer look right now. Uh, literally just got a message from our friends over at Transguide. This is the crash that came in a little bit earlier during the newscast, and what we're learning now is that they could possibly be closing off these lanes uh, as we take a closer look in. So exactly not, we're not exactly clear uh, how serious this crashes, but if they're going to be closing the lanes, you're going to want to make sure you're planning ahead because it's not looking good already. We're starting to see a stretch of yellow and orange there in those southbound lanes. Again, right at 35, the crash detected at Somerset Road. We're going to watch that one pretty closely, but as you can see, it's surrounded by a lot of that fog. Uh, now, we're going to keep an eye on that, but just a heads up as we're looking forward to the new year, taking you up here to I-10 at Kendall County for that Kendall Extension Project. Keep in mind, there's going to be another closure happening as the I-10 eastbound frontage road right in Kendall County. That will be closed from Manger Springs to US-80 
87 as they continue to the next phase. Uh, this is going to be completed by spring 2022, so we still have some ways to go, but we'll continue to watch these roads there and I 10. But the wider look at the map does show that it is looking like a pretty foggy start, so we'll also keep a close eye on this crash. But as always, make sure that you keep your eyes on the road as well, please, especially with conditions like this today. Mm -hmm. yes, and sir. low beams, low beams. Yeah, take yeah. it slow. More of the same here for Mike uh, for, and, and tonight. Could we see kind of a carbon copy of this morning? Yeah, and uh, late, late tonight and early tomorrow morning, we're going to probably be dealing with more fog and some mist around here because the humidity is going to be sticking around through about mid morning, mid to late morning tomorrow. So this is what it looks like over there by the airport. And granted, this uh, this camera's on top of a building, so down at the surface, it may be a little bit better, but not much. Dense fog advisory for most of the area up until 10 o'clock this morning. Visibility is down to a quarter mile out there at the airport. Bernie stage, Castroville half mile, same thing, uh, New Braunfels and just about everywhere. We're seeing very, very thick fog. It seems like it is the thickest right here in the middle. Again, it's going to be very stubborn all morning long. Probably some mist out there as well. Got some moisture upstairs in the atmosphere. So once we do finally get rid of this fog, which is going to be, it's going to take a while, at least a good five, six hours, we'll still have some clouds hanging around here, sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds throughout the day. And it's still going to remain very, very humid out there. Yesterday we hit a high temperature of 82 record. Yesterday was 83, so we're right within reach of it, and that's going to be the situation again today. The record is 83 going for 81 for a high, and uh, a lot of folks are going to be well up into the mid 80s. That's going to be the case tomorrow as well. Here's the uh, computer model and a lot of clouds hanging around here throughout the morning hours. Then we will see some sunshine mixed in later on this afternoon. Clouds come back in here overnight and the first part of the day tomorrow. Now watch as these clouds kind of sweep on out of here by early afternoon. That's the initial dry line is kind of a two phase uh, front, if you will. Best way to describe it coming through tomorrow. So the initial dry line comes through right around noon, late morning, noon, early afternoon. That's going to get rid of uh, any morning clouds and the humidity is going to be dropping like a rock then throughout the afternoon hours. So it's going to be very dry, very comfortable windy and also that's going to allow temperatures to once again heat up. So we'll still be well up into the low close to mid 80s tomorrow. Then the front moves on through and then temperatures are going to be dropping like a rock. So here's what happens tomorrow. We start off very, very muggy in the early morning hours and the humidity drops off. And the nice thing is, though, it looks like the humidity is at least going to be staying on the lower side. So we will have some cooler mornings. And even though it's going to be slightly on the warm side going into the middle part of next week. We're looking at uh, at least not what we've had this past week with temperatures that have been way, way above normal. So it's going to feel a little bit more like like winter next week. 77 degrees today at noon. Most of the cloudy skies. So a lot of stubborn fog this morning, mist and drizzle out there and then call it partly cloudy skies later on today. 81 high temperature. It's going to be very warm and humid tonight. Watch out for uh, some low clouds, some fog, maybe overnight, you know, just after midnight or in the wee hours of tomorrow morning. So we start off like that again tomorrow. Then we get drier air coming in here about noon is when that dry line moves through. Wind's going to pick up and it's going to be very comfortable in the afternoon, but it will be very warm. If you are going out then tomorrow night and going to be out very late, take a coat because that front moves through and temperature is going to drop. We'll make it down to about 34 degrees. So 70s throughout the evening hours tomorrow night, then down to 34 and colder in the hill country to a Sunday morning and then Monday morning down to the upper 20s here in town. And if you haven't taken down the Christmas decorations yet, we are going to probably be working on it going into next week. Yeah, you get that pass up until the 6th for, up the, until, for the 12th day of Christmas. The, yeah, the Epiphany, the th We Three Kings Day. Mm -hmm. I call it the We Three Kings Day. It's the Three Kings Day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mike. you think of the song, yeah. right? Wow, 524, about 66 degrees on your Friday morning. All right, still ahead in your morning spotlight. We'll tell you which show topped most pirated shows list of 2021. We have a couple more entertainment tidbits before we say goodbye to 2021. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. We just don't know what to expect. One division won three primetime Emmy Awards, and now it's earned a more dubious distinction, the most pirated show of 2021 on Torrent Download Networks, according to the website Torrent Freak. Four other Marvel series on Disney Plus made the year's top 10 list of most illegally downloaded shows on those sites.
out of all the things you do in life, there's that one minute that you feel like you're the most important thing in the world because everybody's watching you. To prepare for his starring role in Jockey, Clifton Collins Jr. talked with real-life jockeys and almost no one else. I cut off all my ties from, from Los Angeles, and I, uh, I spoke to two mentors, my grandmother, and the rest were all jockeys. So I, I was completely cut off from the outside world in the best ways, including uh, call blocking my agent. His focus paid off. Collins is nominated for Best Male Lead at the Indie Spirit Awards for Jockey, which is now playing in limited release. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 528, 66 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA on the last day of 2021, what health experts say they're worried about heading into the new year. Plus, why your pet may be the key to keeping your goal in the new year to be healthier. Making headlines this morning, why federal health officials are most worried about kids and school as we head into the new year. Take a look outside. Yep, really can't see much out there with live cam. That fog is the story again this morning. 66 degrees at 531 this morning. Mike will have our New Year's Eve and New Year's forecast in just a bit. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, December 31st. Thank you so much for waking up with us on the final day of 2021. We're about to turn the page on a new year. Here's Mike with more on our weekend forecast. And yes, it is changing too. Yes, and we are going to turn the page on the weather, but that's about a day behind the uh, change in the calendar. This is live cam out there. And granted, this is on top of a building, but it it actually has improved ever so slightly. This view just um, kind of looking back to the past hour. Temperature still is at 66 degrees, dew points at 65. So when those two numbers are running neck and neck, you've got uh, relative humidity readings that are well up into the 90s. Not much of a breeze out there, and that's why we do have a lot of very thick fog. Still quarter mile visibility out there at the airport. It has improved somewhat at Port S.A. Randolph, as well as Stinson and Castroville have improved ever so slightly, including New Braunfels. But don't get um, to a false sense of security, I guess I should say, because uh, we're going to keep this fog around. It's going to be very stubborn throughout the rest of the morning. Dense fog advisory remains in effect. First of all, fog is covering just about everywhere this morning, and the fog advisory is in effect up until 10 o'clock this morning. As far as uh, the allergens, boy, there's a ton of mountain cedar out there, 16,270. It had gone up from the previous day's reading. Of course, the update account is going to come out uh, just after 7 o'clock this morning. It's also going to be interesting to see with that strong front moving through tomorrow, windy conditions throughout the afternoon tomorrow as well as Sunday what that's going to be doing to the mountain cedar count. Got to wait and see on that one today. 77 at noon, 81 high temperature, partly cloudy skies. It's going to stay very, very humid going into this evening. Then we're going to be still just in the uh, mid 70s and staying in the mid to lower 70s all the way through the rest of the evening up through about midnight. After midnight, it's not going to be cooling down. It'll still be very warm and humid. We may start to see a little bit of fog trying to move into the area. So if you're out very, very late into the wee hours, Make sure you watch out for that. Changes throughout the day tomorrow. We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, is the fog causing problems? Well, it's tough to say whether or not this fog has brought this situation that we're seeing here off 35 Southbound at Zazamoto. But when we see situations like this with these types of conditions, of course, make sure you take it easy out there. Let's take a closer look, see how what's going on out there. This is off 35 Southbound. Shot is at right at Zazamoto. You can see some flashing lights out in the distance. Some vehicles making their way through there and actually trying to exit. Uh, what we're looking at right now is a crash that occurred a little bit earlier this morning. And of course, we saw first responders out there working to clear things up, but make sure that you are taking it easy because we are starting to see this cause some problems there in the southbound lanes. Uh, right now, we have that detected at Somerset Road in those southbound lanes. You can see the orange and yellow stretching. That has continued to build throughout the morning, so it is not looking good. And when we see these conditions outside, it obviously makes it more challenging to navigate. So watch out for that and watch out for this stall all the way up here on the northeast side, right at I-35 uh, northbound at Thousand Oaks Drive. Not causing problems just yet, but the last place you're going to want to be stranded is on the highway. And again, with conditions like this, as we're seeing on our road weather map, that dense fog that's been in the area. Good news is if you are traveling into San Antonio from some of these communities, you're not going to encounter big delays at this hour. I-10 westbound coming in from Seguin, still pretty green with 29 minutes this morning. 24 minutes coming in from 87 and Lavernia, so a slight slowdown, but that's pretty normal. 29 minutes coming in from Floresville on 37-181. So let's take one last look here at 35 southbound at Zazamoto. We'll watch this continue. We'll continue to watch this throughout the morning and give you those updates as needed. Mark Sarah. 
Thank you, Stephen. Last day of 2021, a year a lot of people will be happy to say goodbye to. But we're far from saying goodbye to COVID-19. CNN's Britt Conray rounds up some of the biggest concerns health experts have heading into the new year. One day away from 2022. But wait. This is probably not the time to have big New Year's celebrations. Indoor New Year's Eve celebrations should be out. I would strongly recommend that this year we do not do that. New Year, same message as last year. We could be looking at a very grim beginning to, you know, to January. Even if you're just with four or five individuals, uh, uh, there's a good likelihood that at least one of them could have COVID-19. And here we are again. But with the highly transmissible Omicron variant, the number of new daily COVID-19 cases is the highest it's ever been. Heading into 2022, health experts are worried about people who haven't been vaccinated, especially little kids who can't get vaccinated yet. There are still a lot of children under the age of five who aren't yet eligible to be vaccinated. And so we can do our part by getting vaccinated and doing all the things we need to do to help keep them safe. There's concern about keeping kids in school. It's critical that we do what we can. In some places, a, a short-term closure may be necessary in order to safely return students back and have adequate staffing. And that's an issue our health care system is facing as they bear the burden of this pandemic. If our hospital systems go down because so many are out with COVID and hospitals are seeing this all over the country, then there's going to be no one there to care for you. I'm Britt Conway reporting. State and federal authorities say one person is dead. Three more are hurt after a helicopter crash in Livingston, northwest of Houston. The FAA says a Bell 206B helicopter with four people aboard crashed yesterday in a field. It's unclear what led to the crash. The Texas Department of Public Safety said a 54-year-old man from Livingston was killed. The three others were taken to Houston area hospitals. The FAA says the National Transportation Safety Board will lead the investigation. New unemployment data shows the labor shortage isn't likely to end anytime soon. The four week moving average of unemployment benefits is just under 200,000. That's the lowest it's been since 1969 or to put in another perspective, 52 years. Some economists warn the number may be slightly skewed because of the holidays. Still, the numbers indicate a strong demand for labor and not enough of it. Time check, 537, about 66 degrees. Still ahead, from the destruction of the Death Star to the end of Thanos, we'll show you how to sync a New Year's countdown with some iconic movie moment. And next, how your pet may be the key to keeping your New Year's resolutions to get healthy. So we check the live cam on this last day of 2021 at 538 this morning. That fog is hanging around, and that's the story this morning. According to Mike, he's also going to tell us when we can expect those cooler temperatures at the start of the new year. Welcome back. 540 resolutions for the new year are easy to make and most times difficult to keep. Very difficult. But if your goal is to be healthier in 2022, your pet may be able to help. CNN's Mandy Gaither explains. If you hope to ring in a healthier new year, you may find motivation close to home. Letting our pets help us to get healthy is a great way to go. Tema Martin with Best Friends Animal Society says if your goal is to get moving in 2022, your furry friend can help. You get a dog that knows what it means when you put on your, your walking shoes or your running shoes. They'll bring you their leash. They want to get out and get exercise too. Some cats may even like to stroll, and your animals can also help lower stress. Even just eye contact with our dogs and cats is healthy because those, you know, elicit a feeling of love and comfort for us. And if your goal is to eat better, many fruits and veggies like apples and baby carrots are safe for your dog to enjoy too. You do some research, find out what kind of healthy snacks you can have for yourself and share with your pet. That would be a great way to keep your, your New Year's resolution to stay healthy. Over the course of the pandemic, many have felt isolation, but walking your pet can get you in the fresh air and allow you to be social with others at a distance. It may also help mental health as well, allowing you to remember the good things in your life. This is a great time to stop and focus on how much our pets give back to us. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. 
Time 542, still 66 degrees. And next, why the CDC says you should avoid going on any cruises for the time being. In your morning consumer headlines, more money is heading to IKEA employees here in the U.S. The hourly wait rate will jump to at least $16 an hour. A majority of employees will also get a performance bonus totaling a payout of nearly 76 million bucks. The furniture retail giant is also announcing an enhanced benefits package. It includes a minimum of five weeks off paid time off and the company is accrediting strong sales in 2021. The CDC is now saying no one should be taking a cruise right now regardless of their vaccination status. The CDC just increased the risk level of cruise ship travel to its highest level. The industry has seen a recent increase in cases of the Omicron variant on board cruise ships. If you do go on a cruise, they recommend you are fully vaccinated and have received a booster shot. Well, for those who are interested in ringing in the new year in a whole different way, moviegoers can now sync their New Year's countdown to some classic Hollywood blockbusters. So according to findthemetaverse.com, you can watch your favorite movie and start off the new year on the film's most iconic moment. All right, so for example, if you start the movie Back to the Future at 10, 19, 07 p.m., then at the stroke of midnight, the DeLorean will hit 88 miles per hour, <laughs> sending Marty McFly back to 1985 and you into 2022. I like that one. Here's another one. You can watch one of Marvel's iconic finger snaps from either Avengers Infinity War or Avengers Endgame, and you can time Avengers Infinity War starting at 948 52, so 948 and 52 seconds p.m. to see Thanos snap half of the population out of existence or you can start Avengers Endgame at 9.29.30 p.m. And you can see Iron Man snap Thanos to start off 2022. The time codes are from Disney+. Plus. Okay, and finally, you can start Star Wars Episode Four at the uh, A New Hope at exactly 10.02.43. If timed exactly right, Luke Skywalker, according to the website, will use the Force and destroy the Death Star exactly as you ring in the new year. And just see all of the starting time codes for these and other iconic films like Die Hard, Alien, and The Lord of the Rings. Check out this story right now on KSAT.com. I think we should bring this back at 9 a.m. later this morning to talk about it more at we, length. We should because yeah. I have some opinions on which one I would. I don't know if I want to do the Thanos snap. <gasps> right. You don't want to risk it. Like, don't want to risk it. It's like. Put juju out there. <laughs> half my family's gone. 547 right now, <laughs> about 66 degrees. Steven, are we having any incidents out there? I know earlier we did with the fog. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, we still have this problem that's presented itself off I-35 southbound. It's Osmota. Been there for over an hour. Not looking good. Let's go and take a closer look, see how it's shaping up for this early morning. Uh, still some fog that you can see from this trans guide shot. Very difficult to make out exactly how many vehicles are involved if there's more than one. But we see those flashing lights out there in the distance and some cars that are trying to move over and slow down. That is the law, so make sure that you're following the rules of the road, especially on mornings like this. Let's take a closer look at the map, see how that's impacting those southbound lanes right at 35. Detected at Somerset Road, but you can see that's stretching all the way back to Zazamora a little bit further down. So again, not looking good for those drivers that are heading down I-35 southbound. So watch out for that and still watch out for this stall. It's been up there off I-35 northbound at Thousand Oaks Drive a little bit further up. So uh, morning has presented a few issues. Unfortunately, doesn't look like we're ending the year on a high note uh, for the early morning commute, uh, but make sure that you're making choices, better choices later tonight when you're out on the road ways, maybe celebrating, uh, toasting to a new year. Make sure you're cheering to good choices. Here are some helpful tips for you. Make sure that you plan ahead and know how you're going to get home before you head out to a bar to celebrate or maybe a party. Uh, use a ride sharing service. Make sure you have those apps already downloaded and that your phone is already fully charged. Call a friend for help and the most common sense uh, tip there. Just don't drink and drive. Uh, let's take one last look here at 35 Southbound at Zazamoto. We'll watch this pretty closely and have more coming up a little bit later on, guys. Hey, back to the movie thing. Yep. Yes. What, is there an a little mark or something like that that signals the exact beginning of the movie? It's right before, like, if it's Paramount and you see the the title page come in. Is that considered well, part of the anything movie? Anything you're streaming or watching, even on like Blu-ray, there's that time code that starts at the very bottom. Starts, okay. you know, okay. and so you About just that. will adjust your time code to the ones that we mentioned. And I, yeah. we've already talked to our producer, and we are bringing this back at nine. Great. Yeah. So we'll go for it one more time for the class. Why don't we start one this morning and see if it can do it right at the start of the 9 o'clock show? We didn't mention the movie Animal House this time, Mike. We're, we mentioned some other ones. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, lots of fog. Now, this picture actually appears to have uh, 
Huh, gotten a little bit better. We still have obviously the dense fog advisory in effect till uh, 10 o'clock this morning. Visibility has gone from a quarter mile to a half mile. Not much, but it is a little bit of an improvement. Obviously, uh, with all this fog around here, uh, the roads are going to be on the damp side. Driving into work this morning at places that look almost like uh, you know, some sort of a bad horror movie or something like that with all this fog. And it's covering most all of our areas. As a matter of fact, everybody within earshot now. Uh, junctions technically not in our area, so everybody is seeing a little bit of fog or a lot of fog. And like I said, it is going to be very stubborn. Temperatures right now are averaging about 25 degrees above normal. Should be at 41 right now. We are at 66 degrees, 69 Stinson and Pleasanton, and even mid, well, the cool spot, if you will, is 59 degrees right now in comfort. The dew points have gone up about 15 degrees from this point yesterday. Of course, uh, we had that dry air that moved on in here on Wednesday afternoon, late, so it was very comfortable in the afternoon. Started off yesterday morning dry, and then, of course, the humidity came back in here. So, again, we we're about the 15 almost 20 degrees higher with the dew point temperatures. So a lot more humidity is uh, hanging around here this morning and it's going to be sticking around throughout the rest of the day going to tomorrow morning. So even two o'clock in the morning, we're going to have a lot of humidity around here. We may start to see a little fog trying to develop even in the wee hours tomorrow morning. So if you're out very late tonight celebrating, watch out for that. Then Dry air starts to come in here and by noon we'll see the wind shift around. It's going to be very breezy tomorrow. Dry air comes on in. Then we get the surge of the really cold air and it is cold up there and that cold air is going to start to work its way down through here by late tomorrow night and then into Sunday and temperatures between tomorrow night and Sunday morning. Temperatures will be dropping about 40 degrees, about 50 when you go from the high tomorrow, which will be in the low 80s down to the low 30s by Sunday morning. 77 today at noon, mostly cloudy skies again the the fog is going to be very stubborn throughout the morning we'll have a little bit of mist damp roads take it easy driving 81 high temperature today which is two degrees away from the record today tomorrow we start off really really warm and it's going to be warm in the afternoon but the humidity will drop like i said by about noon then the cold front comes in about 10 o'clock tomorrow night and boy temperatures are going to plummet windy on sunday very cold sunday morning is going to be I don't mean to say brutally cold, but wind chill temperatures are going to be way down there. And then good hard freeze Monday morning. 28 okay. is pretty brutal for me. <laughs> well, but but tomorrow morning, excuse me, Sunday morning with the really cold temperatures and the windy conditions. Mm -hmm. So it may feel colder than uh, than Monday morning. It's going to be a face slap considering what we've been yeah. like now for a couple weeks. Yep. All right. Thank you, Mike, very much. 552, 66 degrees on your New Year's Eve. Well, there are nearly 100 new video games scheduled to release before the end of March. Up next, a look at some of the most anticipated. Pokemon Legends Arceus is an action RPG where, you guessed it, players have to catch them all when it releases January 28th for the Nintendo Switch. Just start at the beginning. We landed on Mars. It looked wrong. Eyes up, Guardian. Like Destiny 2 The Witch Queen is the new expansion to the MMO shooter for PC, Xbox, and PlayStation consoles. The Witch Queen invades February 22nd. What could the demigods ever hope to win by war? A Song of Ice and Fire author George R.R. R. Martin may not have finished The Winds of Winter yet, but he did write the lore of Elden Ring, which releases for Windows, Xbox, and PlayStation systems on February 25th. The hyper-realistic racing action of Gran Turismo 7 races onto the PlayStation 4 and 5 when the green flag drops March 4th. Ready, set, Chocobo! Racing of a different kind happens in Chocobo GP, with players driving characters from the Final Fantasy games. The birds fly the coop March 10th for the Nintendo Switch. Hold on, what game are we playing here? We're playing Bonkers and Badasses, baby! Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is what you get when you mix a first-person shooter with a tabletop RPG theme with an adolescent bomb builder as Dungeon Master. While that seems like a lot to unpack, anyone who's played the Borderlands games, which this is a spin-off of, will likely nod with knowing approval. The mayhem commences March 25th on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella.
Ahead the next hour, good morning, San Antonio. The untold history of a West Side woman who became an important leader in education for Hispanics in our city. And it may not feel like it, but we are in winter, and this time of year can mess with your body in more ways than one. What you can do to avoid the winter blues. And we'll take a look at some of the top stories that made headlines throughout this year. That plus a look at traffic coming up with Stephen Cavazos. Very light traffic out there right now, but fog and mist are again a problem uh, here in the San Antonio metropolitan area. We'll be right back. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Friday, December 31st. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Happy final 6 a.m. at 66 degrees for 2021. If you have plans this evening, you're wondering about the weather, and so are we. Mike Osterhey just taking a short jog across the studio <laughs> right now as he gets us Zoom updated. Out to the three shot. There we go. There we go. Yeah, so join us now. What can we expect? tonight going into the stroke of midnight. Very warm and humid. Uh, we'll have partly cloudy skies. The fog's going to be sticking around this morning. And then late, late tonight, if you're out really, really late, may start to see a little more fog trying to develop. So definitely watch that because uh, even when I woke up uh, about two o'clock this morning, there was still plenty of fog around here. So it's going to be the same situation then tomorrow morning. This picture has improved ever so slightly. Visibility is up to a uh, half mile right now, and it's really improved to Port SA four miles, but this can change very quickly as it has been doing. We had some thicker fog earlier this morning and it will get thicker at times. And notice how most everybody less than a, a mile visibility right now in many, many locations. Rock Spring is now down to zero visibility. It's gotten a little thicker around Eagle Pass and Del Rio, Gonzales as well. And then going down 35, Laredo is just at a half mile visibility right now. And same thing up the road in Austin. And most of our area has a dense fog advisory up until 10 o'clock this morning. Like I said, it is going to be very, very stubborn and there's some mist on the roads as well as kind of that that dampness out there. 66 degrees temperatures have been holding steady and are going to stay pretty steady throughout the rest of the morning. And we've got a ton of mountain cedar and it's going to be interesting to see what happens to the mountain cedar count, not only later on this morning, but after the windy conditions tomorrow, as well as on Sunday, we may be hitting the peak of the season this weekend. Temperatures again steady this morning. Lots of clouds, lots of fog. It'll be sticking around here through mid morning. Then we'll see some more sunshine by noon and we'll already be up in the mid to upper 70s at noon. Then we're going to top off at 81 today in a very humid 81. Again, it's going to stay sultry overnight tonight and we'll start to it's kind of a one two. Uh, uh, one two punch, if you will. Dry air comes in about noon tomorrow, windy conditions throughout the afternoon. Then the front moves in tomorrow night and it is going to be cold in all capital letters. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos, probably pretty light traffic on this last day of the year, right? We haven't been seeing a whole lot of activity out on the roadways, but that doesn't mean that we have not been seeing issues out there. Let's take a closer look 410 at Evers. Uh, we're not seeing a whole lot of folks out there from these shots at Trans Guide. As you can see, 281 at Nick coma. Uh, just a few drivers out there getting their morning started early. Now we took our eyes off of that crash for just a moment to show you how the morning is shaping up around town. Uh, there's 281 at Grayson. You see just one or a few vehicles out there, but conditions aren't necessarily the greatest to be driving in, but uh, make sure you're taking it easy out there because as I mentioned earlier, there's issues like this out there happening. Let's take a closer look at the map. This is off I-35 southbound at Somerset Road, uh, but as you, saw, as you saw from that shot at Trans Guide, uh, it's possibly right at Zaza Mata, but we're seeing a traffic build up there in those southbound lanes due to a crash. Not looking good this early in the morning. We have light traffic, but we're starting to see that build up there on 35. So watch out for that. This has been there for over an hour now, and we're hoping that the driver's OK and that first responders can clear the scene pretty quickly. Let's take a jump up over here to a stall that's been out there of I-35 northbound at Thousand Oaks for quite a while as well. Looks like we're seeing some fog out there, so make sure you are driving carefully this morning. And if your travels do take you through the downtown San Antonio area, well, they're pretty much green across the board, as we showed you earlier from these particular locations. Uh, so you won't find any delays, but we're going to continue to watch the roads closely, including that crash off 35 and some helpful tips for this New Year's Eve celebration. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police are investigating a deadly crash on the city's west side. Jonathan Cotto joins us live this morning. Jonathan, what's the latest? 
Good morning, sir. Well, we've learned only one vehicle was involved in this crash and the driver was killed. Let's take a look at what that scene looked like earlier this morning. The crash happening on the access road of 410 near Waters Edge Drive in front of the Acadiana Cafe. That's between 151 and Marbach Road. 1 30 this morning now police say the suv hit a utility pole killing the driver believed to be in his 40s and slightly injuring the passenger they say they had just left the party and they believe alcohol was a factor in this crash it's important to mention that as we head into the holiday weekend san antonio police department's traffic uh, traffic unit will be active on roadways and highways and say they will be doing their very best to respond to calls where drunk drivers may be reported. Now, both SAPD and Bear County Sheriff's Office say it's an all-hands responsibility to plan ahead of New Year's Eve celebrations to prevent drinking and driving. Again, the identity of the victim is still pending. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. 2021 was here with many history making moments. Beginning with insurrection at the Capitol to the use of new tools to help us fight COVID-19 to unprecedented trips to space. Tina Isabel Rosales has a look at all the major headlines that captivated much of our nation. 134 hours into 2021, division and democracy collided at the Capitol. An insurrection just as Congress was affirming the results of the presidential election. The pro-Donald Trump mob delayed the electoral vote count, but could not stop it. The votes Vice President Mike Pence formally declared Joe Biden the winner around 3.30 a.m. January 7th. The House, including 10 Republicans, impeached Trump again. The first president impeached twice, acquitted twice. Hi, Joseph Robinette. Next constitutional duty, inauguration of the 46th president and the first female black and South Asian vice president. With a pandemic still surging. Vaccine, vaccine. COVID-19 inspired new lyrics, new legislation. President Biden signed a $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief law. 12 to 15 year olds could get the vaccine. Then kids five through 11 and boosters for already vaccinated adults. Mass mandates divided while the Delta variant surged. Omicron threatened testing patients and already stretched medical staff. 2021 put juries and justice on watch. Former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin found guilty of all charges for kneeling on George Floyd's neck for more than nine minutes, killing him. Teenager Kyle Rittenhouse found not guilty of killing two and injuring one in what he said was self-defense during protests in Kenosha, Wisconsin, after the police shooting of Jacob Blake. In Georgia, three white men found guilty of murdering Ahmaud Aubrey after chasing down the black jogger. And the Supreme Court leaving in place a nation's most restrictive abortion law in Texas. So many lives lost in an instant. 98 people killed in the condominium tower collapse in Surfside, Florida. 10 died when the crowd surged at a Travis Scott concert in Houston. Six died when a vehicle barreled through a Wisconsin Christmas parade. Lives changed, seeking safety along the U.S.-Mexico border. The number of migrant arrests, 1.6 million, the highest ever. Afghans desperately sought a way out of their country as the Taliban took over the capital. 13 U.S. service members died in a Kabul airport attack. We will hunt you down and make you pay. On August 30th, the last American soldier left Afghanistan, just 12 days before the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Prince Philip died at age 99. COVID guidelines left a wife and queen to sit alone. In a year, so many took a stand. Francis Haugen testified Facebook prioritized profit over public good. U.S. Court. gymnasts testified FBI officials downplayed their stories of Dr. Larry Nazar sexually abusing them. Sexual harassment complaints forced Andrew Cuomo out of the governor's mansion in New York, while Bill Cosby went home. His sexual assault conviction unexpectedly overturned. Yeah. Congress finally passed a $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill. Supply chain problems kept shipping containers stuck at ports, and jobless claims dropped to their lowest point in half a century. Good evening. California's governor kept his job, surviving a recall. All right, Virginia's governor-elect turned the Commonwealth red. School board meetings became battlegrounds over COVID-19 measures. Georgia imposed voting restrictions. Former President Donald Trump rallied crowds to criticize the 2020 vote. I never conceded. Never quite ruling in or out. The countdown to 2024. Two, 
fun. Other countdowns made history. Tourists spent three days in space on the first ever orbital flight on SpaceX. Billionaire Richard Branson went to the edge of space in his own rocket. Here it goes. Days before Jeff Bezos did the same. And NASA celebrated landing a rover named Perseverance on Mars. Like 2021, Perseverance pushing boundaries, persisting through it all. I'm Isabel Rosales reporting. And we will get through 2022 together right here on KSAT 12. It's 609, about 66 degrees. We're coming up next, the story of a West Side woman who became an important leader for Hispanics in our city and how she educated so many people for decades. If you have to head out, run some errands or maybe head to work this morning, please be careful out there. Slow down. We do have some fog and mist out there. We'll check on the roads with Stephen coming up right here on GMSA. This SA Salutes holiday greeting is brought to you by Walk On Sports Bistro. Hi, my name is Brooklyn from Walk On, so I want to give a special shout out to all the men and women overseas. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. A West Side woman became a prominent leader in education for Hispanics in San Antonio despite the lack of adequate space and water. Sister Pauline Fedetto, along with two other sisters, established Mission Espada School, where they educated so many people for decades. Patty Santos brings us this story as part of our series, History Untold. Sister Pauline Ferrero was born in 1874 in West Side, San Antonio. When she was 22 years old, she decided that she wanted to enter the Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word. In 1915, Sister Pauline Fierro got a strong calling to serve the community around San Francisco de Espada Mission. In Southwest San Antonio, she'd seen that people did not have equal educational opportunities or housing opportunities. With no water or proper space, Sister Pauline and three other sisters started the school with two to three grades in each class. Most of the children in this area didn't even get to the eighth grade at that time. Embraced by the community, Sister Pauline and the other sisters introduced art and music. In this area, she started the Christmas dramas of the Pastorella. And on Christmas Eve, the children would drama the shepherds uh, on their way to see the baby Jesus. Sister Pauline also went on to help establish the Guadalupe Community Center and taught the first religious vacation school in the Archdiocese of San Antonio. Her diaries help record the city's history. Sister Pauline was a compassionate, caring person, an excellent educational leader, and she did photo documentaries with her scrapbooks. Her contribution was recognized by the city of San Antonio's World Heritage Office. Oh Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. 615, which means it's time to check two things. Stephen Cavazos' caffeine level <laughs> and traffic conditions. How you feeling, Stephen? We're feeling, you know, I could probably use another cup. Okay. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to lie to you guys, but it's okay because you guys are giving me all the energy I need this morning to get through. Uh, let's take a look at the roadways because it's still pretty quiet from these shots at Trans Guide I-10 at the Y. We're not seeing a whole lot of activity out there, but I've mentioned this a few times uh, now over an hour. We've had this crash that's been taking place off of 35 at Zazamora. Let's take you right to the map and show you how traffic is looking because although it's looking light from those shots, we're seeing a buildup there in those southbound lanes of 35 right at Somerset where it's been detected uh, not looking good and that's because we aren't seeing a lot of activity out there this morning so if they had been on any ordinary day we could probably start seeing a whole lot of red but uh, even then right now it's not looking too pretty let's take a jump over here because we do have another stall that's been picked up here off i-35 northbound at Weedner road uh, this one off thousand oaks looks like it just cleared but we have this new one that we have off of Weedner, so watch out for that and as i've been mentioning throughout the morning if you plan to have a good time tonight make sure that you're making the right choices because if you don't it could cost you. Now, according to SoberRides.org, the cost of a first DWI, the first offense if you're over 21, could mean up to six months behind bars. A $250 or to a $2,000 fine, the loss of your driver's license for up to two years, and potential criminal penalties. So make sure that when you're cheering and toasting, you're toasting a good choices. One last look at the road, 37 at South Cross, South Cross that is still a quiet morning. We're going to watch that crash off of 35 and give you all those updates throughout the morning, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks, Stephen. Yeah. Mike, okay, so we're ending the year kind of muggy, foggy, 
are we gonna, are people who are maybe gonna be out celebrating, are they gonna experience any fog tonight on their drives home? There's gonna be a chance of that uh, if you're out late, late tonight, because the fog, you know, this morning, um, even when I got up and started heading into work about to, you know, 2, 2 30 in the morning, it was, there was a lot of fog around the area already. So it's gonna be the same situation tomorrow morning. So again, if you're out really, really late tonight, watch out for some of that fog. Now, as far as temperatures around the area, Everybody is well up into the uh, well, we got 150 degree reading out there at Rock Springs 59. Everybody else is well up in, oh, excuse me, Carrizo Springs at 55 degrees, but everybody else is well up into the uh, 60s right now. And there is a little bit of mist being reported out there at the airport. So the roads are definitely damp with all of this and low clouds and all the moisture out there on top of uh, the fog. And that's going to be sticking around throughout the rest of the morning. This is what it looks like with live cam right now. And actually, this picture has improved ever so slightly over the past. Um, about an hour or so. Dense fog advisory for most all of the morning up until 10 or most all of the area, pardon me, up until 10 o'clock. So in other words, it is going to be very stubborn. Visibility is now up to two miles at the airport. So it was down to a quarter mile roughly an hour ago. Um, by the way, I just out of the corner of my eye saw some of the trans guide cameras and some of them do have some uh, some little spots of drizzle on them. So watch that with the damp roads. Two and a quarter mile visibility Randolph and Pleasant Pleasanton at uh, two and a half, three quarters of a mile at Hondo. And most everybody has fog in our viewing area. And then Rock Springs right now is pea soup, just a mile and a half up the road in New Braunfels. And then going up in toward Austin, you got a half mile visibility. The humidity is going to be sticking around throughout the rest of today as well as tonight. It's going to be a very sultry evening. We'll have partly cloudy skies. And like I said, then again, in the overnight hours, we'll probably start to see more fog developing in early tomorrow morning. Then right around Mid morning is when things are going to start to dry out in the hill country. That dry line moves through town right about noon or late, late morning. Wind's going to start to shift around. It's going to be very windy tomorrow and very comfortable in the afternoon, but it's still going to be on the warm side. Then we get the surge of the cold air coming on in here. So we hit a high tomorrow right around 83 degrees. By the evening hours will be about 70. Then temperatures are going to drop down a good well, between 10 o'clock tomorrow night and Sunday morning, we'll drop about 40 degrees. Between the high tomorrow and Sunday morning, a drop of about 50 degrees, and we're going to have windy conditions as well. So it is going to be definitely a blustery cold morning on Sunday. Then it gets even colder just as far as temperature-wise by Monday morning. 77 at noon today, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature up to 81. The record's 83. Going to be close again. Very humid today. And then tomorrow we start off very humid. Dry air at about noon. Cold front, call it 10 o'clock tomorrow night. Very windy all day long. Windy much colder on Sunday. If you're going to early church on Sunday, bundle up. And then bundle up school Monday morning. It's going to be a cold start. Sunday morning should be pretty obvious what we need to do as soon as we walk out the door, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, and you'll probably and, and all day long. I mean, you're going to be hearing the, it's going to be windy and then it's going to be windy overnight. And yeah, don't forget to uh, have an extra blanket tomorrow night. OK, I'll turn the heating blanket back on. Yep. You know, I, I turned it off this week because I was like, oh, don't need it anymore. You'll need it tomorrow night. It, OK. Thank you, Mike. 621, about 66 degrees. After the break, Becky Hammond finalizing a deal to finally become a head coach. We have the details coming up next in sports. Trilogy for COPD. <coughs> Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting on. If you've been playing down your COPD, it's a new dawn, it's a new day. It's time to make a stand. Start a new day with Trilogy. And I'm feeling good. No one's daily COPD medicine has the power to treat COPD in as many ways as Trilogy. With three medicines in one inhaler, Trilogy helps people breathe easier and improves lung function. It also helps prevent future flare-ups. Trilogy won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking it. Do not take Trilogy more than percent. Prescribed. Trilogy may increase your risk of thrush, pneumonia, and osteoporosis. Call your doctor if worsened breathing, chest pain, mouth or tongue swelling, problems urinating, vision changes, or eye pain occur. Take a stand and start a new day with Trilogy. Ask your doctor about Once Daily Trilogy and save at Trilogy.com. 
624. Welcome back. A morning sports. Spurs assistant coach Becky Hammond is reportedly finalizing a five-year deal with the WNBA's Las Vegas Aces to become their next head coach. That's according to ESPN. The sources say she plans to finish the season with our Spurs. The deal would make Hammond the highest paid coach in the WNBA. Hammond has been an assistant under Greg Popovich since 2014. She was a six time all star during her playing career with the WNBA. She's been interviewed for several head coach openings in the past, but has not received an offer to be the first woman to lead an NBA team. Well, after having their last game postponed because the Miami Heat didn't have enough players to suit up, Spurs will tip off a seven game road trip tonight at seven at the Memphis Grizzlies per the Spurs injury report. Uh, point guard DeJounte Murray remains out due to health and safety protocols and Lonnie Walker is questionable with a right knee contusion. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. The 11-4 Dallas Cowboys getting ready to host the 10-5 Arizona Cardinals Sunday at 325. Wide receiver Amari Cooper, who recently said he wanted more touches, which he got last week against Washington, feels the Cowboys offense will need to play fast against the Cardinals defense. I've noticed even last week uh, when we weren't when we weren't playing fast, uh, we weren't as productive. But when we started speeding things up, we were very extremely productive, uh, and those guys were tired. Um, like I said before, you know, I heard one of the guys. Well, he told me like to my face, like, "Man, y'all need to slow this down. I'm tired." Like that's what he that's what he told me. Um, and so I know how effective it is. And with Arizona having such a good defense, uh, great players, we would have to see how how how. Um, how conditioned they are. Cowboys Cardinals Sunday afternoon 325 in Arlington. This is going to be one heck of a football game. Go Cowboys. All right, 626, 66 degrees. With COVID-19 cases on the rise around the world and here locally, many are worried about New Year celebrations contributing to the overload on healthcare workers. What's being done here locally that you should be aware of? That's coming up after the break. Take it easy on the roads this morning, especially on those curves. It's uh, damp out there right now. We've seen fog and mist again this morning. Pretty widespread again today. We'll check in with Stephen and Mike coming up right here on GMSA. The COVID-19 surge is relentless as we head into the new year, rising concerns for more hospitalizations and delayed travel. All this and more coming up. If you're just now waking up, uh, it's a kind of a blurry look out near the airport right now, but we do have fog in the mist in the area right now. Right now, will it be that way for our New Year's Eve and the stroke of midnight? Mike will tell us coming up. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, December 31st. Good morning. Happy New Year's Eve. Yes, I hope everyone's enjoying their final day of 2021. I'm excited for 2022. Uh, we're question all mark, question mark. <laughs> <laughs> we're all chuckling question just a little bit. Voice. I mean, you really don't know what's coming next year, but we 643 may not feel like it right now, but winter is here and it can affect your brain and your body. Eric Hernandez shows us some simple ways to avoid the winter blues. How does this and this and this impact your health? The longer winter nights can lower vitamin D levels, leaving you feeling exhausted. Foods that help, tuna, salmon, dairy products, orange juice, soy milk, cheese, and egg yolks. Less sunshine also causes depression rates to spike. Studies reveal your brain's serotonin levels are lowered this time of year, causing you to feel moody. It also throws off our circadian rhythm. When the sleep-wake cycle is disrupted, our bodies make less melatonin. Psychologists suggest taking a walk first thing in the morning. The natural light helps jumpstart the circadian clock. If that's not possible, electronic light boxes can help. That's not all. According to the New York Times, a drop in melatonin and serotonin can also have a negative effect on fertility. But don't worry, it's just temporary and should correct itself as your body becomes accustomed to it. And does it seem you get more headaches this time of year? You're not alone. Medical Daily reports that migraines cases increase December through March. Try not to change your activity level. Keep exercising, seeing people, and stick to appointments. Our well-being, our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions are under our control. Studies also show women between the ages of 20 and 40 were twice as likely to have seasonal blues compared to men. That may have to do with lower levels of estrogen and progesterone during this time of year. If you're feeling down for more than a few weeks, contact your doctor. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. 
6.45 a.m. on your New Year's Eve. We're going to check in one more time with Stephen Cavazos with traffic. Yeah, this problem has been there throughout the entire morning show. Mark, Sarah, 35 South Bend at Zazamoto. It doesn't look like it's clear just yet. Let's take a closer look in from Trans Guide, see how traffic is moving through there. You can see that the lanes are pretty wide open, but that doesn't mean necessarily can drive right through them. We do have first responders that are working to clear this all up, and it's taken quite a while. So you're going to want to make sure you start looking for different routes if this your travels take you through 35 South Bend. We'll take a look and maybe offer some of those a little bit later on. But right now, just watch out for this. Taking you to the map, though, we see that buildup of traffic that just continue to stretch as the morning has gone on. Looks like a little bit of green just popped up there, so that could be some good news, but uh, not necessarily what we want to see for this early in the morning. Take a wider look at the map, though. It's still pretty much green around the city. We're seeing a stall up there on 35 at Wiener that's been there for a little while now, but not causing problems. One last reminder, if you are going to be heading out tonight to enjoy some New Year's Eve festivities, make sure you are cheering to good choices. Some helpful tips. Plan ahead. Know how you're getting home before heading to a bar. Make sure that you do have a plan in place. Also, use a ride sharing service. Make sure your phone is fully charged and you have those apps already downloaded. Call a friend for help. And the obvious, as I said earlier, just don't drink and don't drive. Make those choices. Start 2022 off right. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Mike? Pictures improved a little bit. Yeah, it looks like yeah. the fog's getting a little, a little better. But it's still going to be hanging around throughout the rest of the morning. So don't let this kind of kind of fool you a little bit. Also notice the sheen on the road over there. We've had a lot of mist. There's been some mist being reported around the airport. Visibility is up to three miles now all around the metropolitan area. It has definitely improved slightly, not over there toward Hondo, Uvalde, or, uh, well, Rock Springs has actually improved ever so slightly, but it's dropped down Uvalde, Carrizo Springs, and then going down in toward Laredo. Austin is still at a mile. So we, even though it may have improved ever so slightly, we're still going to have fog, we're still going to have mist uh, over the next few hours around here throughout the rest of the morning commute and the dense fog advisory is in effect up until 10 o'clock this morning. So as far as the humidity, it's there. It's going to be sticking around for about the next, uh, say, 36 hours or so, up until roughly noon tomorrow. We keep these dew points very high. It's going to be sultry tonight. We'll probably see some fog redeveloping then in the overnight hours. So if you're out very late tonight, you may run into a little bit of a fog and some mist in the wee hours tomorrow morning. So early on, we start to see the dry air come on in here in the hill country tomorrow morning. And then right around noon, it comes through here in town. Wind's going to be shifting around. It's going to be very breezy tomorrow with winds gusting about uh, probably 30, 35 miles per hour or even stronger than that out of the north. And then by midnight, uh, early Sunday morning, we get the surge of the cold air coming on in here. So by tomorrow evening, we'll still be very warm. The humidity drops down throughout the afternoon, so it's going to be a lot more comfortable, but it's going to be a warm day. We'll still be in the upper 60s and 70 tomorrow evening late. Then that cold air comes in here, and this is going to be a doozy of a cold air mass coming on in. We'll be down. This computer model has us at uh, right below freezing here in town. It's going to be a real close call because it is going to be windy and windier conditions tend to keep temperatures up just a little bit. Keeps the, the cold air from the coldest air from settling down to the surface. But of course, we will have wind chills to deal with on Sunday morning. It is 14 below right now in Bismarck, North Dakota. That's the actual air temperature and the wind chill is 36 degrees below zero. So it feels a good 100 degrees um, colder than it is here up there in uh, Bismarck, North Dakota. Yeah, Mark's like going, wow. Yeah, that is what, uh, well, not that cold of air, but it's going to be really cold around here on Sunday as well as Monday morning. Monday, we are looking for more of a widespread uh, freeze. 77 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy conditions and stubborn fog throughout the rest of the morning. 81 high temperature today. And it's going to be very humid again, sultry tonight and watch out late, late tonight for maybe some fog to reform, maybe a little bit of mist around here. Very warm and humid in the morning tomorrow. And then the humidity drops down. Dry line moves through about noon, windy throughout the afternoon, 83 degrees. Cold air comes in here overnight. So Sunday morning is going to be a whole different story. 34 degrees here in town and then 28 Monday morning. Right after we started the newscast this morning, I asked Mike if he was taking his tree down on Thursday, and he said, no, no, Mark, that's not why it's there. Well, I, I probably will be taking it down on Thursday because that's when you can take it down, but that's the epiphany on Thursday, there the, you go. the 12th day of Christmas, right. King's Day. Uh, yeah, I'll probably take it down maybe 
the weekend after? If I get a chance on Thursday or the weekend after. Yes, there you it go. depends. If uh, I feel like it. That's my qualifier. <laughs> no rush, anybody. No rush at all. 650, about 66 degrees. And just a reminder that popping fireworks in the city limit is illegal. It can result in the Class C misdemeanor, which can carry a fine up to $2,000. If you see anyone using fireworks recklessly, call SAPD's non-emergency line, not 911. That number on your screen right now, 210-207-7273. If you or anyone else gets injured, that's when you call 911. Let's go outside with live cam one more time. You're watching GMSA on this last day of 2021. Waiting for the sun to come up. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, a new record in COVID cases. The nation now averaging 316,000 new infections every single day. But there's good news on the horizon. The FDA expected to approve a booster for 12 to 15 year olds and encouraging news on Omicron from South Africa. We'll have that plus much more coming up on New Year's Eve here on GMA. We'll see you soon. The news you need to know before you go a rollover crash involving an SUV kills a man on the west side early this morning. It happened around 1:30 on the access road of Loop 410 near Waters Edge Drive in front of the Acadian Cafe between 151 and Marbach Road. Police say the SUV hit a utility pole, killing the driver and slightly injuring the passenger. Authorities tell us the two people in the SUV had just left a party and they believe alcohol was a factor in this crash. Let's check see what's happening on the roads right now with Steven Cavazos. Finally, some good news here off 35 southbound at Zazamoto. We do have that crash it had been causing problems throughout the entire morning. Looks like it is now cleared out. You can see that we have an empty corridor there. 35 southbound at Zazamoto is a shot at Transguide, but that crash was detected right here off Somerset. Uh, we had been seeing a buildup of traffic throughout the morning. Now it looks like it's finally improving, so some good news. But be on the lookout. This all is uh, we have a new crash that popped up here off Loop 410 West at I 35 wider look at the map shows. So thankfully the roads are still pretty quiet, Mike, but how's the weather going to be looking? Well, very foggy this morning. Roads may be quiet, but very damp. Uh, as you can see the reflection off 410 over there by the airport. Visibility is three miles right now. Uh, still a lot of fog all around the area, and we still have the dense fog advisory up until 10 o'clock. So it's going to be stubborn, obviously, and we'll hit a high temperature today up to 81. It's going to be very sultry overnight tonight. If you and also, if you're out very late, watch out for a little bit of fog to redevelop after midnight. And then tomorrow we start off humid, dry throughout the afternoon, windy, hot, much, much colder Sunday. Okay, real quick, guys. All right, New Year's resolutions, beginning with Steven. Oh, man. Uh, Sarah said it best yesterday, not to worry so much. All That's right. a great resolution, I it think. It is, Michael. To be more like Mark. <laughs> Good luck. Try again. Uh, yeah, not to worry. Not to worry? Chill out a little bit. I'm going to take a cue from Hamilton. Talk less. Smile more. Smile more. <laughs> Happy New Year if we don't see Happy you. New Happy Year, New Fox. Year. Happy New Year, everyone. But we will see you back here at GMSA. At Can nine. I say go blue, Michigan? You did. <laughs>